the greatest person that ever walked in shoe leather said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What in the world are we going to do with Jesus? Are we going to let people religiously make him a little boy walking all over heaven with a wooden cross? Or are we going to allow him to be what he went through the cross to become? Right. Are we going to sit back in our afflictions, in our sickness, in our conditions, and let some religious order slap a hand over our mouth and say, be still? Don't lift your voice to him like they did Bartimaeus. But let me tell you what you can do tonight to turn the course of your life. You can override the religious carnal teachings and you can see that your only opportunity time has come. And you can see that the only hope you've got is him. And it doesn't matter how many times to slap a hand across your mouth and how many times to religiously make you sit down in a pew somewhere, shut your mouth and be still. If you get blind enough and sick enough and down enough and broken enough, nobody will be able to stop you from lifting up your voice and crying out to him with his anointing and his passing by. I've got text marked here. I I don't know what I'm even doing in this. Uh, this is the farthest thing in my mind when I came in here. But somebody's got to have a miracle tonight. Somebody came here to touch the hem of his garment. Amen. We're not here. This is not a side show. We don't put on a show. We don't know how to put on the show. We're not, I'm not an entertainer. I'm a Jesus man. Right. I stand and point the way to help. If you go that way, he'll help you. I point the way to the healer. The doctor's in tonight. The doctor's in this evening. He's ready to take you. He's ready to take your case. He's ready to offer you the prescription of the cure. How many of you believe that tonight? You feel like an anointed glory to God. Lift your hands up, praise Him for the anointing. Hallelujah. Oh God. Are we going to let people get in our way? Are we going to miss the only chance, maybe, perhaps? That will ever have to touch him tonight. Somebody may be here that will never have the chance to touch him for this particular thing. Are we going to let what somebody takes him out at Monday morning on the job? We're going to let that stop us? We're going to let that hit us? Are we going to be worried about whether our family, the family finds out about getting prayed for or being in a meeting where the power
The Bible speaks one place that said he would have passed them by had they not cried out unto him. Amen. He said, when you're down to your wits end, he said, if you'll cry to me, he said, I will hear you and I will deliver you from your distresses. But you're going to have to get your voice above a whisper. You're going to have to quit worrying about what people think. You're going to have to have come out of this formalistic, ritualistic, religious thing that goes to a ball game on Saturday and hollers till they can't talk, goes to church, and somebody's waiting in the vestibule saying, be still. Amen. Do what God said when he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Lift up holy hands and praise him without wrath. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Thank God to make a joyful noise and praise him on the instruments, the cymbals, the timbrels, the stringed instruments. Somebody said, praise the Lord. That's God's desire. That's the God of the book. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank God he stands ready tonight to pour that anointed healing power out upon you to bring forth issues of water, living water, rivers of water in your life and do what doctors cannot do, do what medicine cannot do, do what men today religiously say that God stopped doing. He's still doing it just a few nights ago. He healed a woman of tumors. Tumors right here in this building. Amen. can't let things get in the way. Amen. We must not let people get in our way. We may not like this. We can't let unbelieving family members get in our way. Amen. We can't let unbelievers on the job get in our way. Amen. You keep listening to unbelief and you surround yourself with that, the next thing you know, you're worse off than you've ever been in your life. Amen. But if you'll do what Barnabas did, see that it's your it could be your final opportunity. It could be your one and only chance to really get to the anointing. Where is the anointing? Where is the anointing tonight? It's where two or three vessels full of the Spirit are gathered together. In Jesus' name, that's where you find the healing. Come on, brother. How did God preserve this anointing? He didn't lift it up and float it in clouds all over the universe. You're the vessels that's got the, the heavenly treasure. And it ain't going to reach people by a floating cloud. It's not going in the summer breeze. It'll only get there when people realize that God's anointed. It's not in burning bushes. It's not in the rocks anymore. It's not in the clouds. It's in his chosen. put upon us a religion? Will you let that be a barbed fence to stop you from reaching the grassy fields and the rivers of living, healing water? It may be your own chance. It may be your own hope. People thinking they're doing God a favor will get right in your way. Yes, I am. Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me! Jesus never replied. Because the crowd came over and told him to be still. Don't trouble the master. See, that's what religion basically teaching across this nation. 
come into the sanctuary, shut up, don't do one thing, fold your arms, twig your thumbs, and try to make it through an hour, we'll let you out at 8 o'clock. And the people are dying like a tree without water. Yeah. There's some of you here tonight that are down to the end of the way. And all you need to do is realize this could be your last chance to touch Jesus. Brother Bobby called this evening and said that Sister Autry's mother had found her dead in Alabama. They told Marsh, I believe it was, and, and maybe me too, that she was a healthy woman. Brother Bobby said they don't know whether it was foul play they don't, but they found out later she had a heart attack and died in her home alone. <clears throat> Didn't have an air conditioner, probably the, it, it, the intense heat had a lot to do with her, her tragic death. You don't know. When your last chance comes, tonight, someone here that's willing to lay your pride aside, and pride is your killer. Amen. Pride is your destroyer. Amen. Willing to lay all your religious, philosophical, traditional teachings outside of the steps and say, once, once in my life, I'm going to dare be different. And I'm going to do what my religion has told me not to do. And I'm going to do what my family would be ashamed of me for doing. I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to do what a blind man did when they tried to make him be still and not trouble the Master when the Word went by, when Jesus walked by and he cried out. They came and said, don't trouble the Master. Don't bother the Master. Hold your peace. Be still. Bartimaeus must have realized something. My opportunity is getting by. I may never have this chance again. You think you're going to stand in my way. You're not standing in my way. You can run around here. You see the sunshine. You've seen the moon at night when all I could hear was people trying to describe it to me. You, you described the twinkle of the stars to me, but I've never seen the stars. I've touched the, the tender petal of a rose, but I've never seen it. I've smelled its delicate aroma, but I've never seen it. I've, seen, I've heard a lot of things, but I've never seen a lot of things. You can see I came. His opportunity was passing by, and the crowd was in his way, and people was trying to tell him, don't do that. Don't cry out to him. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be still. Hush. Don't trouble the mouth. Don't that sound like America? Don't that sound like our traditional church across this nation that goes in a thousand people and you would hear a pin drop in the praise service on the carpet. Somebody said, praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you it's time to come out of the holes. It's time to come out of the traditions. It's time to come out of the, of the philosophical ideas and theories. And it's time to get your voice lifted up. Thank God he's passing by. And when he passes by, he's got healing glory to God. Tonight, if somebody would just dare to believe, hallelujah to God, and don't pay attention to traditional teachings, though your mind may be cluttered with it, like mine was many years ago, if you'll dare to be different, and say, no matter what people think about me, I've got this sickness, I've got this problem, I've got this disease, and if you will do what part of us did, and don't let people get in the way, and the Bible says, Crazy. I'm not crazy. You get healed tonight and you'll hear me. Amen. I don't know much about medicine. 
I've learned a few things about him. And he cares about you. Amen. He cried that much louder. Jesus! Have mercy on me! And honey, the second time he proved His determination. He didn't care what anyone thought. Let him go home and talk about that crazy woman that wanted to get in. Let him go home and talk about that crazy man that couldn't get still over getting a miracle. Let him talk all night. Let him drink 10 pots of coffee so he can stay up and talk about it. What difference does it make if you get to touch the hem of his garment? Used to bother me when people talked about me and said I had the wrong spirit, called me out to Christ because I preached that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. I've got some messages to preach this week. And I'm going to run the devil. I'm going to chase the devil crazy. Man. I want the devil to know that I found out Man. the truth. Man. That he's a liar, always been a liar, and always will be a liar. And can never tell the truth. Amen. Amen. And as long as he can keep you behind religious <coughs> bar bar fences with boundaries put on you that men taking the word of God and twist it, change it, sin, God don't do it anymore because they will not live the word close enough to have God perform it in their lives. That don't mean the sun don't have it. Somebody's to praise the Lord. That don't mean God stopped doing it. That doesn't mean that God ain't going to do it anymore. I'm here to tell you that if you'll believe with me tonight, God's ready to heal you and do things that men say he cannot do. People got in the way. But he cried the next time that much louder. Now, when God sees your determination, people may hinder you for a while, but if you'll keep going, if you'll keep crying out to God, if you'll keep crying out to Jesus, let me tell you, it wasn't Bartimaeus that cleared the way. When Jesus turned around, he cleared the way. Amen. Here stood a man blind. It got quiet again, but this time nobody was telling him to hush. This time nobody told him to say, I'm shut up, be still. Amen. This time nobody put their hand over his mouth. That's right. But this time he heard a voice. Yes. And said, what would you have me to do? Oh, God. Think about it. To actually get a, a personal audience in spite of the fact that moments before a multitude of people was in your way. Amen. What difference does it make if you get your personal audience with God? Right. None. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What would you have me to do for you or unto you? Oh, God. I guess we could probably think of 10,000 things tonight. Oh, God, you've got, a, got time for me to read my yes, Lord. But there has to be one thing that you need tonight. More than anything. Somebody said, praise the Lord. There has to be one thing. God, I feel something moving all through me. There has to be something that's most important to you tonight. That you could say just that quick, Lord. That I might receive my marriage restored. Lord, that I might see my home and my, my marriage restored. God, that I might see my bills paid. God, that I might see this old cancer dry up the doctor says is going to kill me in six months. Surely there's one thing. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Surely there's one thing. Across his 
mouth. He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Lord, that I might be healed. You know what Jesus said? When he saw real determination. You know, I speak up with God's anointing. I feel God in my heart. If I haven't done anything in 17, 18 years, I've tried to show God my determination. I've made miserable failures and flops. Man, you can't try hard to catch up with me to feel the faith. But I've learned a lot of things over the last 17, 18 years. I've learned that God appreciates someone's determination. Man. He'd rather see a man flat on his face try than to see you sitting back in a corner humped up in a shell whining. I'm getting a cold wave on that, but that's all right. That felt really good. Lord, I said, Lord, that I might see the, the voice that spoke the world into existence. Said, according to your faith, so be it unto you. And that's all that was needed. The scales fell from his eyes. And Bartimaeus, when he first opened his eyes to see, he saw everything. He saw the lily of the valleys. He saw the rose of Sharon. He saw the bright of the morning star. He saw the first and the last. And he saw the greatest friend they would ever have. Somebody say amen. But he was that close to letting people get in his way. Well, I'll tell you, I'm hitting a nerve here tonight. That close to letting people get in the way. People can frustrate you. They can keep your spirits broken. You won't. You don't want to go to church. Amen. Don't allow it to be. Don't let things get in your way. Amen. Well, you hear me tonight. It's easy. I feel God will own me. It's easy for God to part the Red Sea. Amen. And bring a nation through. Amen. It's easy for God to go ahead and lock the jaws of life. Amen. It's easy for God to to wait in a first fire for three Hebrews to come bouncing in the ashes. Amen. But the hardest thing in the realm of spirit for God to handle is a situation where he wants to get to you. <coughs> where he wants you to get to him. Right. But you, not him, are allowing people to stand in the way. Don't let it happen. Well, I never felt such an anointing in my life as I feel right now. You go to listen to too many voices I preached last night, a message. I think I stirred some people up. I think I made a few mad. I'm pretty good at doing that. But I don't care what anybody thinks, says, or does. This preacher wants that word behind me. Amen. I want his voice. Glory be to God. I want only his voice to direct me and lead me and guide me. I want to know his voice. If there's 10,000 voices speaking, I want to know his voice distinctly from all the others. Right. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Lord. Bartimaeus would not let anyone tell him he couldn't cry out to God for his miracle. Amen. Well, we got 250 people here tonight. 200 people, something like that. What we got? The, the walls. The walls, the chandeliers, the lights on the jar of praise for this people. 
But we're suppressed and we're pressed and we're oppressed and we're, we're depressed because of things and activities all around us. But we ought to break loose from it and use the word against it and say the word has set me free and whom the Son is free is free indeed. You can't stop me, devil, from going forward. You can't hinder me. You can't hold me back. I'm Abraham's child. I'm a child of the king. Somebody said, praise the Lord. I may have afflictions. I may have infirmities. And I may have problems. But one step with the master's finger and my problems are over. If I can just get through the rustle bustle. If I can just get through the crowd that tells me to be still. I can get his attention. And if I get his attention, I'll get his miracle. It's real easy to get rid of unneeded friends. God, I said it. Whew, Lord, I said it. It's real easy to get rid of those parasites you don't need. You don't need bug spray. Just need to learn the techniques. <coughs> Embarrass them a little bit. When they start talking about somebody that you like, say, Praise God! Hallelujah! And we sat in there parking me to like a shout around. It's not hard to get rid of people that get you in your way. You'll do what the word says. I can't tell you how you go and get a little emotional down on the street corner and talk about Jesus and shouting out in front of the traffic. You won't have any friends. <laughs> People tell you God can't heal in your way. People tell you that God quit healing 2,000 years ago or in your way. As long as you hang around that mess, you'll never get healed. Man. I'm here to tell you I love you. People tell you that the gifts of the Spirit are no longer in the church are in your way. <coughs> People that tell you that the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire is not real today or not for you today is in your way. Amen. Somebody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They're in your way. One of, the best, one of the best ways that ever was to get people that are in your way out of the way. It's when they tell you you need to simmer down and not, not cry out to Jesus like that. If you've got a real need, honey, you'll cry. Now, I'm not talking about going berserk and bananas. I've seen some people go plumb bananas. They need to be in, in the jungle of a banana tree. <laughs> Brought approach on the whole Pentecostal move. Amen. I'm talking about sincere hearts crying to a real God. I'm talking about having a need and somebody tell you God can't do it. I'm here to tell you it's time. Somebody lift up your voice. Thank God like a trumpet and get you an audience with God and let that word speak back to you and say, I'm the Lord God or the Lord thy God that healeth thee. And let the word heal you. Somebody say amen. He said, according to your faith so then and Barnabas had the faith. He cried the second time showing his faith. And when God saw his faith, the scales fell from his eyes and people that had been in his way were out of the way and the miracle came and the man Got to see. Amen. Is God still able to do that? Yes, yes sir, He is. Amen. But things get in the way. Yeah. It didn't hinder Jesus, the woman at the well, having five marriages, unsuccessful marriages. It didn't hinder Jesus. It probably hindered everybody in town, but it didn't hinder Him. Right. The thing you have to understand is what well, anybody in the world approves of. If God does, it don't make no difference. No way does it. That's right. Yeah. right. Amen. Dear God, I'm glad He don't hear every prayer. There's some been prayed. I'd have been in. I'd have been in bad trouble. That's right. They're still praying up this creek here. Some people up this valley still praying for me to get saved. <laughs> but you know what the real truth is, brother? 
90% of the people that's on this creek know that I'm preaching the truth. Amen. 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 That's right, brother. Amen. That's <coughs> true. You old baby costume. <laughs> I love you, Brother Mixon. Baptist pastor, one of the best friends I got today, pastored a wonderful Baptist church in South Carolina. Something tragic happened one Sunday morning. He raised his hands and started speaking in tongues in his own pulpit. <laughs> slain in the spirit last night right here and it came to me after church. He said, I was really slain. <laughs> he got up and started trying to get back to his seat and fell out again. <laughs> I'm glad that they may think we ain't got much sense. Of course, you're a school teacher. You've got plenty of learning and knowledge and I'll just give you highly. This man is a school teacher. His wife works for what is it, the state of the county, the county, works in the courthouse, in, in, the tre in the treasurer's office. She's involved in city government, county government, two of the most well-respected people in that whole area, except for their belief. <laughs> Here in the, in the, now they're great people in the eyes of a lot of people, except they believe this, man. <laughs> but they can't help it. This thing, see, it wasn't, he just, can you imagine? Standing at his Baptist church with his whole Baptist congregation, and the pastor raises his hands and that's it. He's not been the same since. He preaches the revelation of Jesus now and has got it deep in his heart. God's doing this thing. God's doing it. I'll sting you high. But sometimes people get in the way. You believe what? If it goes the little, smallest, tiniest bit against traditional people, then you're off the wall, man. But you'll never be the same, Joseph Mixon. You'll do more now for God than you've ever done in your life. And people can't stop what God's doing. I'm not the bull. I feel the power of God. People get in the way. Now, most people could never handle that woman's five married. Wonder what most of them said when she came by the city limits sign going down Main Street hollering, Come let me show you, man. Somebody said, What she say? Some of them women said, My God, she's found her another man. <laughs> think about it. You think that? You old man, because of me. But she wouldn't let that stop. She wouldn't let that hinder her. She get that old crying out. Because she found a man that could handle her five marriages. Amen. She found a man that could handle her, her live-in situation. She wasn't walking that aisle no more, brother. No, she done had five catastrophes. She just went and got her somebody else's old man and went living with him. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. The most unlikely person in town to carry a message 
wound up at Jacob's well. It was no accident. It was no coincidence. He was waiting on her. The Bible said, I'm about to have a speech. The Bible said he must needs go through Samaria. You know why? He had an appointment with a, a woman from Sidon. He didn't want anybody in the way, so he let his disciples go on into town to get blown in bread. He, they probably passed her on the way into town as they went out of the path. She, went by, she probably smelled like Avon. <laughs> Honey, she must have been a pretty thing. She must have been a knockout. Dear God, she could get a husband where you couldn't get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Preaching tonight. She wound up in trouble. She wound up with five unsuccessful marriages. I'm going to be honest with you. She'd have been the top of the pit she lived here. They go by up and down this valley except for R.A. West wanted his church. <laughs> Who I said it. Man, I get talked about too. <clears throat> I mean, I ain't the one can handle all this. God is. When Jesus first encountered her, she was sassy. Ooh, was she sassy? She wouldn't even give him a drink of water. Because he was a Jew, she said. He born a Jew. People gets in the way. Yeah. Those disciples almost got in the way when they got back. Hey, John. She didn't talk to her. When they got back, they wondered, what in the world is he doing talking to that woman? I stand tonight in the midst of many experts. <laughs> At least sometimes I think we think we are. Well, I'm getting the old ways now. I'm better than that. She wouldn't get in a drink. She got a little sassy, that bunch is written. She kind of recommended me. How's it? You, you ask me a Samaritan for a drink of water. Well, don't you know you don't have any demons? Yeah. He turned right around and said, if you knew the gift of God, who it is, that's what's important, is who it is that sits on the well box. Who it is that says, oh, did he give me to drink? You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Yeah. She looked him over real good. She said, well, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, and the well's deep. How are you going to give anybody any water? See, she was all, she was looking carnal. And that's where so many people are. They're standing in carnal situations trying to get a spiritual touch. Yeah. <laughs> when he got finished with her, he penetrated into her spirit and her heart. He broke down her religious ties because when he told her, see, he brought her all the way from the place to where she said he was a Jew, all the way to the place to, the next thing you know, she called him a prophet. But that wasn't good enough. You can't just know that he was a prophet. You've got to know that he's God. Man, man. Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet when he told him you had five husbands, the one you have now is not your own, which means you must have somebody else. Well, right then and there, the board had all went behind closed doors, got behind the big desk, and behind the big board table, took a boat table, threw her from outside car. But Jesus handled the situation. Whether we like this or not, I can't help that write this book. He still handled it. He took a woman five unsuccessful marriages, now lived with a man in open sin. Then and there on the side of the pathway at Jacob's well, probably wore as thick as a groundhog's hole where people come back and forth from town to get water every day. He finally penetrated and broke into her spirit. She told us that we have our church here and we have our religion here and you say we ought to come to Jerusalem to worship. Jesus stopped all of that. He said so many words are not interested in your religion. The religion you've got is not what you need. It's not in Jerusalem and it's not here. The hour is coming when... The Father seeks those that will worship Him in the Spirit and in the truth. The hour is coming that you will not worship here nor Jerusalem. 
That's what Brother Rat was talking about. It's not the temple in Jerusalem. Amen. Somebody said, praise the Lord. It's not the temple in Jerusalem. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. God's not going back to the Jews over there to marry Israel again. You hear what I'm telling you tonight. When he went to that cross and died on that cross, the husband died. When he died, she became free, he became free. When he came out of that grave three days later, he was a free agent. He reached his arms out and now said, Whosoever will, let him come. And Paul so gracious and told us that we're neither Jew nor Gentile, male or female, the kingdom. And the real Jews are those that are inward, and the real circumcision is that of the heart and not the flesh. And the real children of Abraham are those that have faith in Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that God's not going to live in heaven with two women. God's not going to do it. He's got one bride, and that bride's from every nation, kept the tongue, and people, and she's called by his name, and she's not ashamed. If you believe it, raise your hands up to God and praise his name. Oh, praise God. When he broke in her spirit, she found out he was more than a Jew, and she called him a prophet. Then she said, well, we hear that there's a Messiah coming. And then he said, what, what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, Brother Best? I hope you can see something here. Her past was in her way. Five unsuccessful marriages, living in open sin with a man, ain't no way God can love you. Ain't no way God can ever help you. You'll never get out of your mess. That's what the devil probably told her a thousand times. But one encounter with the truth, you see, he didn't just come that way accidentally. He came for her. He didn't just come through here tonight in this anointing accidentally. He's here for you. Amen. Do you believe that? Oh, if I could just make you believe what I'm saying. If I could just make you. If I could just get something to believe yourself. If I could just get Jane to believe. If I could just get somebody to believe. Man. You know why you got up out of that wheelchair when that vision came to me and Moses came down out of the heaven and said, I'm Moses and I'm sent from God to make you home. Do you know why? He came to me the other day. Why you got up? You believed what he said and got up. You believed him. Jesus you made to be healed. Hallelujah. The moment you believe, you can be healed right there in your seat. Well, I'm speaking because I'm not the healer. But the healing power is in God's words. God's words and truth. They don't have to be screamed or yelled. All you have to do is just hear his loudest whisper. Amen. Her past was in her way. Her religion was in her way. Because her religion was letting her participate in something religious. But she had no freedom or victory. When he handled it, he took care of it. I'm going to guarantee that she never went back to that man. She done had another man. He was more than a man. Her life was dramatically changed. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Her past was in her way. Her religion was in the way. But the moment she expressed to him, we have heard there's a Messiah coming. And the voice that spoke the world into existence said, I that speak unto thee am he. She believed what he said. If he came from being a Jew to a prophet and could tell her I that speak unto them he and she believed it the moment he said it she believed it she left that water bucket on Jacob's well and run plumb into town with a message of the living water is this not the very Christ 
He told me everything that I've ever done. Her life was changed. You know why? Because this was probably the only opportunity she'd ever have to have personal communication and contact with Jesus. This was probably the only chance in her lifetime that she would ever have to get that well of living water. And five marriages couldn't stop it. Living with another man couldn't stop it. You know why? Because when the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. And when he delivers you, there's not a power can hold you in body. And you'll run from your sins. And your past will be behind you. And you'll never be haunted by it anymore. Because whom the sun has set free is free indeed. If you believe that somebody, raise both hands and shout yes. yes. Come on, shout yes. yes. Things get in the way. Hello? Hey man, no problem tonight. Things in your way. The little woman been bleeding for 12 years, the issue of blood, in the eyes of all the people, the priests, and the church, and the temple, the sanctuary. She was unclean. An issue of blood. Wasn't allowed to get close to a preacher, to a priest. Wasn't allowed to get close to anyone that did the work of the sanctuary. Wasn't allowed to even sit in one of the seats in the sanctuary. She was unclean. For 12 years, this thing haunted her. If she had any money when she started, she had none when it was over. Amen. Her final and last doctor's visit proved fruitless. The doctor told her she was getting worse. It insinuated or signified to her that there was no need to come back. Her living was gone, which means her money was spent. Yeah. She couldn't buy another prescription. She couldn't have had enough money to bought another ticket to see another doctor. She was broke. She was desperate. She was dying. She was sick. She was bleeding her life away. She was destitute. She was down. She was out of it. The only thing she had to look forward to was getting home and taking what little material she could rake up somewhere and build her a coffin and make preparations for her departure to the world's unknown. But coming down that road, glory be to God, she saw a crowd of people and in the midst of that crowd she saw Jesus. Brother, she tried everything. How many were gone on me? She tried everything. Have you tried it all? <laughs> Alcohol's not your friend. Drugs are not your friend. People that tell you God can't heal and deliver is not your friends. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Coming down that road, she realized her situation, her circumstances. It wasn't an accident. She came that way that day when Jesus passed by. It's no accident you're in this tabernacle of Barney. You're here because you have a need. You're here for a particular reason. And guess what? God's here to meet every need of every person in this building that will reach out and take hold of this and believe what he says. She stood out there on the side of that road and saw that crowd. First of all, now you listen. She saw such a crowd following him. In her weak condition, she probably thought in her flesh, there ain't a way in the world I could get there. But then she said in her spirit, she said in her heart, she said in herself, in spite of what it looked like, she said something in herself. I wish somebody get a hold of that right quick. In spite of what it looks like, she, she made a statement about her condition in herself. And she said, if, if I could just touch, if, if, if I could just get there and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Then there comes a time that you've got to quit talking it and start walking it. Honey, I don't know. I, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to lift this anointing. 
คำดีเวลาที่ร่างกายกันว่าลำบากสมัยโตไม่ได้ยินแต่กากระโมกกากโค้งเข้ามาเวลาที่ได้กระโมกลำบากเลยนะเวลาปีกาสมัยสมัยเท่าเรื่อง I know I'm born. I know I'm the most boring preacher you ever said. I want you to understand what I'm talking about because God is sending this. This is not rehearsed and this is not by the way. God spoke this to me in North Carolina. The deacon I've been seem like I'm all out of whack here. When I think I want to preach, God don't want to preach then. He's pulling it just like that. He's doing it. He's doing it. He told me, he said, you've got to tell people not to let things get in their way. And especially not to let people get in their way. Amen. Hallelujah. He's available tonight. I feel him all over me. He's available tonight. And we can't let anything stand in our way. Amen. He's worth touching. He's worth reaching. He's worth trying to. Amen. Amen. She said within herself, she made her declaration of faith. She established it on the side of the road. Yeah. And then, one step at a time, one trembling little leg in front of the other. Pressing through the crowd, come up behind me. She came up behind me. Yeah. And pressed through the crowd, squeezed through the crowd. Her weakness, no matter her body screaming, I'm going down, I'm going down, I'm going down. But that little old trembling bony hand kept reaching out. And as she reached out, it wasn't very long. After a while, you'll get there. It may seem like you're not going to get there, but if you keep pressing, if you keep pushing, if you keep walking, if you keep leaving, after a while, you'll of his garments. There was a lot of things in her way that day. There was a lot of people between her and Jesus that didn't stop her. Praise the Lamb of God. It wasn't long she touched the hem of his garment and she must have reached right out of the crowd when she touched him. Because he turned around and he said, Who touched me? And she faded back into the crowd and hid herself. Amen. Well, God, and the Bible said when she saw that she could not be hid, if you ever get a real touch from God, bless the Lord, you can't hide it. Amen. You'll stick out like a sore thumb. Right, right. Huh? Right. All you want to talk about is what Jesus did for you. Amen. Everybody goes to talk about this and that. Oh, everybody talk about the Greyhound races. No, you're talking about just racing for eternal life. Somebody say amen. Everybody talking about Bud Wise and everybody talking about Seed from Seven. All you're talking about that new wine. Thank God that holy wine. They talk about getting drunk last Saturday night. You said I got high in a cot Sunday night. I was on that Holy Ghost wine. I shouted it. And guess what? Monday when I got up, I didn't have a hangover. Somebody say amen. I said somebody say amen. Justified leaders. 
leadership. He said, the leaders have cost my people to hell. There's a lot of people turned out of the way of healing because the leadership says God can't do it. I think it's time to come back to stand in the ways and search for the old path. And when you find it, walk in it. Thank God if you die tomorrow night of some disease, stand for healing every minute of your life. And God want it somewhere and the seed will come up in somebody's heart. If I can push that wheelchair to the, to the front step of the pearly gates, I'm going to bump the footrest on the pearly gate footsteps and I'm going to holler inside and say, I can't come no farther. Now what's he going to do? And I mean that with everything in me. I mean that, sir. Because I'm going to see what God can do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When she saw she could not be healed, when you get this thing, you can't hide it. Amen. Huh? They'll be able to say, something different about you. What's happened to you? I'll help you. <laughs> Don't try to hide it. Don't try to beat around any bush. There ain't enough beating around the bush. Yeah, there ain't no leaf left on the bush. Amen. Don't try to hide it. Come on out with it. Amen. Don't let people get in your way. Come on out. Hi. That's right. Come on out to the world. Amen. And say, I touched you. Amen. Tell your friends on the job, I touched you. Yeah. And tell your family, we've all been taught all our lives that God can't heal. But you know the cancer they said I had? It's gone. Amen. I touched him. Amen. He didn't really get it. He can't hide it. And don't let people get in the way. Amen. When she saw she couldn't be here, she said, I touched you. <coughs> she came over to Jesus, no doubt, kneeled down there, and she looked up into his eyes, no doubt. He looked down at her and he said, daughter, he called her daughter with a capital D. I love it. I love it. Now y'all might want to get ready because I, I, I'm not nowhere near time. Yeah. 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 We've been working on that nine o'clock hours every night. <laughs> I've been injecting you every night. Good Holy Ghost, good shot of the Holy Ghost. Um, he said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. What kind of faith? Sitting out on the side of the road, sitting on the road. I know if I could touch the hand of his garment, I'd be made whole. Anybody knows ain't no way an old woman like me can do that. But it doesn't work that way. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. When you decree a thing, follow through. And God will honor your faith. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. People were in the way. Her weakness in the body was in the way. Is that right? The fact that she was unclean and a bleeding woman that had been bleeding for 12 years was in her way. Yes. He tried to stop her. But she declared her faith and did something about it. Amen. And the virtue came out of the word like the virtues coming through this message to the faith you already have and somebody's going to get healed. Amen. And then there are those that we bring for prayer. They may not be able to get to where God's anointing is by themselves. So we have to pick them up and we have to do it, do it ourselves. Amen. When they got to the house of this man, these four people brought him to church, they couldn't get to Jesus because people were in the way. Amen. The congregation.
nation was so big they were in the way. And we'll find out just in a few minutes as I, as I get into that thing that most of them sitting there wasn't there for the right purpose. They, they that sat there seemingly to be his supporters became his accusers. They accused him of being blasphemous. But when you're determined, you won't let anything stand in the way. Amen. Right up on the housetop they went. I don't know how they did it. You, I don't know how they did it. But they took that man up there and him laying there in a palsy condition, shaking on a bed. Up on the house, if we were half of us, we'd have grumbled till at least he fell off the couch three times. He'd have really needed a miracle time we got him there. Up on the house they went, started tearing the sheeting and the roof and all. Well, in the first place, most of us would have been in a lawsuit. Oh, I'm going to get off of that. Right off the top of the house comes shingles flying, boards. Next thing you know, it wasn't a peephole, darling. <laughs> they couldn't get the miracle through a peephole. That's right, that's right. They made a hole in that roof big enough to put a whole bed and a man on it down through it. That's right. You could have thrown an elephant through it. <laughs> and can you imagine the reaction of the congregation as this Galilean stood up front? speaking his words, and all of a sudden this calamity up on the roof. Dear God, sound like the house was being tore up. They wasn't far from being right. <laughs> Down through. Next thing you know, you can see daylight. Next thing you know, one face appeared. Next thing you know, there was two smiling. Next thing you know, there was three smiling. I don't know who was holding that man. <laughs> But they tied ropes around the four corners of that thing, on the legs up. How in the name of God did they talk about determination? God give me a church full of people like that. I'm, be, I'm serious. I'm not looking for heavenly hitchhikers and holy hobos. I'm looking for people to tear the roof off to get the job done. Right down, they, tie, they let him down. Now, brother, I'm talking about something hard to do. I mean, that wasn't easy. Up on top of somebody else's house, turn somebody else's roof off, letting a, a man down with a palsy. And, and they let him down right in front of Jesus. There wasn't nowhere in the world he could miss him. That's the way we got to do it. We got to come to the place that there ain't nowhere in the world he can miss what we are believing for. That's right. right. But what if it don't happen? What if we do all that work? Tear that roof off. Burn our little hands on that rope. And then it don't happen. You might as well go on back home because you ain't a believer no more. You're one of them what ifs. Amen. What if this? What if that? If you look around, you'll find you a thousand. What if, what if that line falls? What if this, oh, what if this beans get away? What if not? What if that didn't get in there? Amen. Right down in front of Jesus, they let that little man, him laying on that bed, a shaking with the palms. That little old man didn't know what he's doing there. He really did. He didn't know why he was tearing that man's house all the pieces. They was determined to get this boy healed, and crowds was in the way. Yeah. Huh? And they led him right down. They wasn't letting nothing get in their way. They put him right down in front of Jesus. 
And Jesus didn't look over there and see that palsy man and say, I see your faith, son. I'm going to heal you. He, he, the Bible said he saw their faith. Right. So he must have been looking up at the hole. Yeah. And there was four bright, shining faces grinning like a new eating saw briars. <laughs> they have done all they could do. Now what you going to do? We done made blooming idiots out of ourselves if you don't do something. I mean, we are in the roofing business whether we like it or not if you don't do something. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm t think about it. Think about it. I'll just be quite honest with you. I don't know what I'd do if there was a crowd of people coming to this church that nobody could get close to it. And I looked up and somebody saw a hole at the top of my pretty ceiling. <laughs> I'll find out whether I sanctified it or not. Brother, they did it. Things got in their way. I'm preaching something. God spoke to me in North Carolina in the back of a little old church just a few days ago. Told me to preach to this people. I thought maybe I'd get to preach this one on television. Maybe as we take next week in it, the Lord's will. But see, God knows what he's doing. I don't. Amen. I just follow what he tells me to do. I follow his lead. Amen. He said it's tonight. It couldn't be more annoying because I never felt God in a greater measure since I've been on the fields I feel him now. There's something about this going deep in some people's hearts tonight. Amen. When he saw their faith, that nothing would stand in their way. Right. That they would let nothing hinder them from getting the job done. Right. He looked over at that man sick of the palsy, shaking on that couch or bed. <coughs> and he called him son. Yeah. I love that. Capital S O N son. Signified relationship to deity. Because if it wasn't, it'd been a small S. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Yeah. Can you imagine up there in the hole? Yeah. Them four looking at each other. Said, we didn't bring him for salvation. <laughs> uh, can you imagine how they must have felt? But he knew what he was doing. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. Boy, did he find out then what kind of crowd he had in the building blocking their way in the first place. Because those Pharisees and those scribes began to reason within themselves. Oh, they got puffed up. And I know them looks. <laughs> Like they're looking down that double barrel noses at you like you're crazy. Girl. I know what they are. I know how it is when you cross a wire. Well, they begin to say, Did you hear that? No doubt somebody else is saying, I tell you, he's crazy. This blasphemer. This man speaks blasphemy. <coughs> tore up inside to see Jesus even knew what they were thinking inside. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Jesus said to them, He said, which is easier? Right. Which is easier for me to do? But he said that you might know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. You see, they were mad at him. He made them angry when he said your sin to forgive because they were right. Only God can forgive sin. Amen. They just didn't know who this was under the hole. Amen. They were right about that. This blasphemer only God can forgive sin. They were right about that. Amen. This man is trying to make himself God. Why, he was not. <laughs> he was God making himself a man. <laughs> they had the horse tied behind the wagon. Amen. 
probably trying to shove it down the road with its nose. <laughs> Poor old pathetic religious world has always been in trouble. Religion ain't worth a dime without Jesus in it. Amen. Amen. I like his dignified message. <laughs> Now you see why I got two Doctor of Divinity degrees. <laughs> now you see why I got two popular. <laughs> but I, I spit the truth. Amen. Yes, I spit the truth. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that you might know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to that man, Rise. Take up thy bed. Amen. What difference did he make? He proved his point. Amen. People sitting in that congregation were in the way of those boys that were on that roof. Till they tore the hole in the ceiling to let him down. And it didn't take long for the word to clear the way. Amen. Some of this is praise the Lord. People will get in the way. Somebody say amen. Things can get in the way. Amen, Brother West. Lots of things get in the way. Let me just hurry real quick. Sometimes, and I want you to get this now, I know that, that I need to really just kind of cut it short. But when God sends you to do a work, sometimes before you get from point A to point B where the work is that you're to do, and your anointing is to be manifested at point B, sometimes a storm arises on the sea of life. And it's being there that Satan tries to stop or the storm may arise. And I'm not going to tell you the storms won't arise in your life, but I'm telling you this, if you'll stir the word up in your heart, he's still got the power to walk out on the front of your boat and speak peace in the midst of that storm and bring you to the place where you are ordained to go. Amen. I can preach 30 minutes on that. There was something trying to get them stopped from reaching the other side because Jesus said go to the other side. When God tells you to do something, there will always be something trying to get in the way. There's too many running around saying God told you to do it then it'll be easy to get done. That's a lie. I've never seen anybody have an easy road that worked for God. It wasn't easy when Moses left Burning Bush University. When he had the fire this time. He went through torment, persecution, and hardship. Things got in the way. The sea got in the way. The wilderness got in the way. People got in the way. His sister got in the way. But God cleared the way. God parted the seas. The hardest thing that you can fight in war against is when friends look at you like you're crazy because of what you believe. But you can touch the hem of his garment. And you can cry out like Bartimaeus. Whatever it takes, do it. And don't keep so much pride about your ability to run ships. Don't you let the word sleep in your boat. You wake him up. Somebody say amen. You wake him up. And show him that you have faith in him. And he'll steal the storm. Things kind of get in the way. Let me just hurry real fast. Oh God. Thank you Jesus. Paul said, Satan hindered. He did run well. Who hindered? Didn't say what hindered. He said who hindered. Who got between you? Who slowed you down? The angel of God appeared to Daniel and said, Daniel, your beloved, who 
you're beloved of God. And he said, I want you to know that from the time you set your heart to understand, you were heard from the very start. But it took that angel 21 days, Brother Joey, Brother Francis, and Brother Randy, my people. It took, it took that angel of God 21 days to get a reply to Daniel. Because he said, I've been out yonder with Michael the archangel. And we've been warring against the prince of Persia. And the devil withstood that answer. Hello? Things get in the way. But God can get them out of the way. Somebody say amen. There's some of you having difficulties right now, and I'm closing. There's some of you having difficulties and things look like they're in the way, problems in the way. But if you'll hold on to God, give Him the chance, give Him the opportunity, give Him time to show you how He can do His stuff. There's not a problem he cannot solve for you. There's not a sickness he cannot heal. But don't you miss that opportune time when he's passing by. Don't you let crowds get in the way. Don't you let friends on the job cause you to back in an old shell of pride. Don't you let your past religious upbringing and what side of the track you was raised upon have any bearing on whether you keep on going for God. I tell you under the anointing tonight that God is still able to heal any sickness or disease. He is still able to cure. He is still able to supply your every need. Thank God. He still fills meal barrels in a time of famine and dearth and drought. He still, glory be to God, can redeem your family when it looks like the world's going to get them and enslave them and make them bondage men and bondsmen of the world. Somebody said, praise the Lord. God's still not bound by all of that. I'm here to tell you that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All you've got to do is realize that he wants to do it. He doesn't want anything to get between you and him. Sometimes we let things weigh us down and that gets between us and God. Sometimes we let the low sins and habits of sin get in our way and it separates us from God. But if we'll get these things out of the way, I'm here to take you and lay aside every weight that's squeeze of his senses and get our eyes back on Jesus. He's still got the power to pay your bills. He'll do miracles. He got a woman off the hook out on the side of the road. She was guilty, caught in the act of adultery. He knew she was guilty. Witnesses there were declaring she was guilty. Eyewitnesses said we saw her in the very act of adultery with a man. And they were taking her to a, to a trial somewhere to see what the law of Moses said that should be done to her. And her punishment would have been there. But they stopped where grace took up. Thank God that when the word took her case, and he did, he looked at them. Disciples become powerless. 
I, I, I can't explain this no other way. I, I, can't, I can't reason. I can't, I, can't, I can't make excuses for God. It's not God. It's us. Amen. I'm not going to stand here and put the blame on God and say, God, don't heal anymore. I'm not going to be like he's six foot high sitting across this country. If God never heals another person, my fingertips, I'm not going to blame God for it. Amen. It's not God. It's us. Amen. I bust hell wide open. I'd have to say that it wasn't him. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you don't touch him, it's not his fault. Amen. He's passing by. Lift your hands up. I feel him. Oh, praise God. I feel him. I feel him. I challenge you right now to lift your hands to Jesus. Passing by. Come on, God, son. Come on, don't have God bless your little hearts. You're going to take it to Him, ain't you? Look at what God's done. Oh, Lord. God bless you. This is, a, this is the power of God. Somebody praise the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, if the truth is, is lifted up, if you'll put the truth up there, where it belongs, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on out of there, you that's got troubles. I'm going to touch the hem of your garment, sir. I'm going to cry out. I'm going to cry out. If a little child could do it, me. Jesus would let them apostles stand in the way of feeding that multitude. God forgive my ignorance. God forgive my, my shortcoming. God forgive my failures. Don't let my ignorance or any man's ignorance stand in the way of people's healings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a few anointing sweeping through this ministry, honey. Glory to God. If you got a problem tonight, bring it to Jesus. So I'm going to touch the hem of this garment. I'm tearing the roof off of this field and I've been hiding in. The glory to God, I'm going to find the word tonight. Come on out of there. Come on out of there and find your way to him. Touch the hem of his garment. Backsliders, you that are lost without God, come on. Some of that's interested in helping these find the truth, come on. Praise the Lamb of God, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Give me the key of G. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord. You better not let this moment pass. I'm telling you under the anointing of God, you better not let this anointed pass. You better not let this moment pass. God is ready to heal. God's ready to send an anointed home with you to heal and cure your family. Let me see. Okay. Somebody pray with these right here. Brother Mix, somebody pray with this gentleman right here. Hallelujah to God. Reach out and touch the Lord.
people. She just found out she's got a heart condition that she didn't know she had. I just kind of decree tonight that this thing's a thing of the past. Let the power of the Most High make her whole. In the name of Jesus, make her way. Hallelujah. All the way from all the girls, South Carolina. Bend your little hands. You touched the hem of his garment. You reached out and touched him. And you've already touched him for yourself. Well, glory, raise your hands in the name of Jesus. He said, I'm the Lord God that healeth. Praise the Lamb of God. Go ahead and worship him. Raise your hands to Jesus. Raise your hands up to Jesus. I wish somebody would believe with me. I wish somebody would help me carry this roof off. I wish somebody would help me. Thank you. 
thank you, Jesus. Be now me. Ho! Ho! Woo! God, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lamb of God. That's Him. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over this building. Give Jesus a hand clap of appreciation and praise. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Come on! He's the healer. He's the king.
tonight that breaks the yokes and the chains, that heals all manner of sickness and disease. I'm going to guarantee you that from the time the sun rises in the morning, some of you, many of you are going to see a change in your life. You're going to feel different. God's done that something tonight. You pressed through and touched the heel of this garment. You are, you lifted your voice and you seen your eyes come open and the devil's defeated and Jesus is rising in here with healing in this way. Well, praise God. Well, praise God. I challenge you tonight to turn around to somebody and confess to them, I have received from the Lord. I have received something from the Lord. I have received something from the Lord. Turn around, look at me in the eye. Oh, God. And tell her, stop leaving here. Show sure. 